These latest versions of FSD coming out recently don't seem like anything major, at least on paper. The release notes are exactly the same as before and there's no mention of any new improvements or features, but there is something about these newest versions that feels very different to me. So I'm gonna do my best to explain why that is and also kind of where I think we're at in the grand scheme of full self-driving. So first off, the car seems to be parking when it gets to destinations more than ever. And I'm not just talking about like randomly pulling halfway into a space. I'm talking about properly lining itself up and actually parking. Keep in mind, this is still not listed as an included feature and support for destination options like parking in a spot is still listed in an upcoming improvement. But I gotta say, for not being an officially supported feature, the car seems to be lining itself up very well, better than most humans around here. And while it's still not super consistent, it definitely doesn't want to do it every time, I would say that it is much more than a fluke. I had one particular day where it parked at all four of my destinations perfectly, meaning I didn't have to touch the steering wheel a single time in any of the drives, which is absolutely wild. I know many of you say you can't get the car to park on its own at all, but a hint is to navigate to a pin instead of an address. I seem to have a lot more luck that way. This version also feels like it has a lot more context about some random situations. Like watch how it moves closer to this toll booth and even stops right at the window before the gate. Hello. Sorry for the additional voiceover of me talking to the attendant here. Thank you. Anyways, besides the slight hesitation leaving here, this was one of the most amazing things I think I've seen full self-driving do. It appeared to purposely position itself closer to that toll booth to make it easier to hand them the ticket. Absolutely wild. And the even crazier thing is that things like this are happening even without the 3X increase in context length scaling, which we know is coming in a future update. Another thing I've noticed related to that is the car's understanding of traffic patterns seriously is becoming now. Next level. Not only does it shoot this gap that I didn't expect it to, but look at the anticipation and how early it started executing that maneuver. I have a feeling that might have been a disengagement for a lot of you, but I thought that was absolutely perfect. And speaking of driver preferences and what users of full self-driving might disengage for, while leaving this same parking lot that we just pulled into, the car ended up doing a maneuver that turned out to be pretty controversial. The center lane in the road that we used to pull in here goes goes by several different names, the most popular of which has a word that YouTube really doesn't like. So I'm gonna be calling it the chicken lane instead. So the chicken lane or two way left turn lane or whatever you wanna call it is used to find out which driver has the bigger ball. No, I'm just kidding. It's used to remove the left turning vehicles from regular traffic lanes and also provides a safe space to wait for an opportunity to go once it's clear. As you can see, traffic is especially bad right now and there were no good gaps it could have taken to complete this maneuver. I'm hoping that future versions of full self-driving will abandon the left turn that it had planned and make a right turn instead, especially when it's waiting so long just to clear traffic because people were getting very impatient behind me. They literally started jumping the curb to get around me. Then once a small gap in traffic appears to the left, it makes its move and utilizes the center lane as almost a temporary merge lane, letting one additional car pass before moving over. And while I thought this was incredible, and perfectly executed, a surprising amount of you disagreed. After posting that clip on X, I had dozens of people telling me that this was not only impolite, but also illegal, with one person even saying they've seen people get pulled over in Idaho for doing exactly this, which is just factually wrong. I even posted the law that explains how these lanes are supposed to be used, and it doesn't prohibit it, but there was even arguments about that. So instead of taking my word for it, here's an Idaho police officer telling you what you should already know. Just to get this straight, you can use the turning lane to merge into traffic. Correct. And the craziest thing is that a couple of these people saying the car did something wrong there have entire internet personas based around testing full self-driving. I think I'm finally starting to understand the discrepancy in the amount of disengagements people have. I don't think it's location dependent anymore and think it's entirely based on driving behavior they don't feel comfortable with and are disengaging instead of just letting it cook. I honestly think FSD may have surpassed many of these people's driving abilities. Kind of 
exciting times if you think about it. That being said, there definitely are some areas where FSD still needs improvement. I had a pretty severe critical disengagement during snow testing, which was a big wake up call to me that we cannot get too complacent even with how well the car is driving now. But I really did want to stress test in the snow because of just how many people tell me FSD can't drive in the snow at all. I swear if I had a dollar for every comment like that, I'd be able to buy a house. Anyways, we'll get into more improvements I noticed and some winter testing right after I tell you about this video's sponsor, Delete Me. My wife and I just purchased our first home, hence the literal mountain of boxes behind me. It's for better acoustics, I swear. Part of this process was signing a ridiculous amount of paperwork. I'm talking hundreds of pages with our personal information on it getting sent all over the place. My wife was pretty nervous about it all until I said, don't worry, our data is already out there, just like yours is. Data brokers have been scooping up information about all of us for years. And in case you weren't aware, pretty much anyone can go out and buy this data, including bad actors. I discovered that details about me and my immediate family, including phone numbers and addresses were out there, which increases our risk of scams, phishing, identity theft, doxing, and even good old spam calls. Delete Me helps to reduce this risk by removing your personal information from hundreds of these broker sites and then continuously monitoring them to make sure it stays deleted. They also provide personalized reports like the one you're seeing here that show not only who has your data, but what data they have on you and also the status of its removal. So far, I've been removed from 91 broker sites with 15 more in progress. Delete Me really is great, and it's almost a necessary service to have nowadays. Viewers of this channel can get 20% off their consumer plans by using code DRIVR or following the link in the description. Thanks so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this video and back to the drive. All right, so before we begin, I do need to clarify some stuff regarding my previous rant about using the center lane to merge because it is a new day and I have some new information that I wasn't aware of and I don't want to get you in trouble from what I said because I realize the reach of these videos does go beyond just California or Idaho. Turns out the legality of that maneuver not only varies state by state but even city by city in some cases which kind of blows my mind and shows you just how tough of a problem solving generalized driving is. I had to complete that maneuver during my driving test at 16 years old in a larger city in California and it's kind of crazy to me that it isn't allowed in some some places because I thought that was part of the lane's entire purpose. Anyways, be careful out there and with that out of the way, let's talk FSD. There have been several other improvements I've noticed in these later versions, especially regarding camera visibility and warning messages on the screen. In earlier versions of 13.2, I used to get those FSD may be degraded messages pretty frequently where it slows the car down, even when I didn't think the conditions were too bad, but since the .6 or .7 revision, they seem to kind of relax it a bit, and I haven't had a single message like that pop up in the rain, even in fairly low visibility conditions like you're seeing right now where there's a lot of road spray. Conditions were similar to this on my 600 plus mile journey up here, and again, no messages or warnings the entire way. So it's really nice to see them relax that a little bit because rain is something the car is gonna have to deal with. Another thing that I've noticed is that these later versions seem to be kind of abandoning their navigation routes more more than ever. So for example, if you take a look at how the navigation wants us to leave this parking lot, it wants us to go all the way around before getting to the exit. But FSD is starting to feel like it's understanding the end goal of the navigation routes and isn't just following it blindly. You can also see it put its bumper over the back curb there, but you can see it doing a multiple point turn just to get to the exit a lot sooner rather than just going around the entire parking lot. Improve reward predictions for navigation is another item on the upcoming improvements list that looks like it may be finding its way into these versions already. Here's another example where our destination is this parking lot directly off to our left. And even though the gate is open and the car has plenty of room to fit in there, it decides to pull off to the right hand side of the road and stop here instead. For a robo taxi, this seems like a much better spot for pickup and drop off anyway. So pretty cool to see it. 
In this one, I purposely put the car in what I thought was an alleyway. You can see on the navigation route here, I know it's tough to see, but the, this road doesn't connect to the road in front of us. And I was fully expecting the car to try to do a three point turn or something, but you can see on the visualizations, it seems to see the road ahead of us. And again, abandons that navigation route and just heads towards the road. And then when it finally gets there, reroutes and gets us to our destination. Pretty incredible stuff. Some of these reroutes aren't completely necessary though, and the car just kind of seems like it wants to do its own thing sometimes. You can see the destination is off to our left. So right after we enter this parking lot, the car should be turning left into this first entrance right here, but it decides to just do its own thing instead. Going this way means that it made itself do an entire lap around the parking lot, which is pretty funny. But when it finally does arrive at the pen, it does a pretty beautiful parking job. Very nicely done. Something else that seems to be continuously improving is its decision making around yellow lights. So I know there's been a lot of discussion around this in the past, but I think lately it's been doing a very good job deciding when to stop at a yellow light versus continue through. You see that person just barely made it, but I think more times than not, it's actually making these decisions better than the most humans I see on the road. Cause I see stuff like this usually at least once a day. Another thing that I wanna mention that's almost not even worth talking about now nowadays. It's just its general understanding of traffic patterns and overall smoothness. The way that it moves around slower moving traffic is definitely a behavior that some people love and some people hate. I personally love it. When the car sees a turn signal or brake lights, it's immediately moving over lanes instead of slowing down behind the car, which I think goes a long way for overall smoothness. But I also know there's a large amount of people who disagree with that very much and would rather have the car not changing lanes quite as often. All of these were on just the regular standard profile and not hurry as well. So I can kind of see both ways, but personally, I love it. A lot of people see moves like those as aggressive driving, and I just fundamentally disagree with that. I think FSD is by far one of the most polite drivers on the road. It's assertive when it needs to be, and then it's also passive when it needs to be, and that is a pretty hard balance to strike, especially in some of these narrow pinch point situations like here. I definitely think that other driver should have yielded to us. By the way, a lot of these clips come from a full drive video that I made that I ended up taking down because it had some sensitive information that I didn't want to share with thousands of people. I'll be releasing it to subscribers on all platforms though, if you're interested in seeing it. Before we move on to some of the negatives, I gotta say I have been extremely impressed with the progress that we've been seeing lately on full self-driving. Some of the moves that it's making, I would have absolutely lost my mind about just like a year or so ago. And now they're just completely normal, just another day. You know, the car pulling out and crossing five lanes for a really short U-turn and executing that U-turn perfectly with super smooth steering inputs. It's just another day for full self-driving, literally not even worth talking about most of the time anymore. It went from feeling like a science experiment where the car didn't feel confident in its abilities to something that's super smooth and super confident and is something that the average driver genuinely wants to use. So big props to all the people over at Tesla AI, keep it up. Now on to some of the bad stuff. First, I think that since Tesla went end to end AI, the car is taking a little bit too many hints from human drivers around. You can see this person to our right who stopped directly in the crosswalk waiting for the light to turn and the car kind of matches his position and stops directly in the crosswalk as well. You could even see it in the visualizations here. Nobody was using the crosswalk, so no harm, no foul, but FSD should be held to a higher standard than human drivers. Another thing FSD still struggles with occasionally is what I would consider some kind of common sense situation. So our destination it goes through this school right here into a back alley and there's a cone blocking off this area but plenty of room to fit around it and full self-driving wants to just get to that destination pin even after seeing this. 
And even after setting in a new navigation route, the car continues to think that going forward is the right move here. So this is definitely an area that needs some improvement for unsupervised to become a thing. There are still some times, although it's becoming increasingly rare, that the car doesn't seem like it knows what to do at all. And the path planner just goes a little bit wild. So we're reaching our destination here, which is the supercharger at this Sonic. But if you keep your eye on the path planner, you can see just how indecisive it is and it actually starts jerking the steering wheel back and forth which I thought was completely solved with version 13 this is actually one of the only times that I've seen it since version 12 but yeah there still are moments where it definitely seems to be a little bit confused on to slippery snow driving performance so the last time I used FSD in the snow was over four years ago now where the visualizations were literally just 3d boxes and I had a lot of disengagements it definitely didn't seem like it knew what it was doing in the snow. And from the comments I get from people who supposedly use FSD in the snow, I expected much of the same. And although it's definitely not perfect and there's a lot of room for improvement, I gotta say it is vastly better than what I tested four years ago which, you know, should be expected, but a lot of the comments that I get make it seem like the newest versions of full self-driving have no concept of snow driving whatsoever. And that just hasn't been my experience. You can see the car is kind of slowing down a lot more than it usually would around these corners, which is nice. Even in the standard profile, I'm not even in chill right now. You can see as we go around this corner, it puts its tire a little too far into the snow and starts sliding and just kind of catches itself a little bit. You know, I don't even really have the proper tires for this kind of driving, but overall the car's doing really good. Even improvements in other areas like slowing down for big dips in the road, overall feels pretty competent and comfortable. Here's another example of the car catching itself in a slide. And I know this is really hard to see in the video and it's kind of something you have to be in the car to feel. But as we go around this corner, the rear end starts kicking out slightly and the car yanks the steering wheel to the right to correct it. I did actually try to go to an empty parking lot and jam on the accelerator pedal as it was rounding the corner to see if I could make it do it again, but it was just not having it. And although the vast majority of the time I spent testing full self-driving in the snow did go much better than expected, and I was fully ready to put out a video being like, what the heck are you guys talking about? There is a couple of key areas where it really does still struggle. The most important of which is that sometimes it doesn't seem to account for the increase in braking distance that it needs to fully stop. So you'll see as we approach this stop sign, it hits the brakes and then starts sliding. On one hand, it's kind of nice that the car doesn't require you to take over immediately at the first hint of sliding, but on the other hand, this is what caused one of the most critical disengagements I've had. You can see we're following the truck in front of us to a stop sign, and it just doesn't seem to be judging the braking distance correctly. I keep thinking, are you gonna brake? Are you gonna brake? <laughs> I usually get a lot of comments about people accusing me of taking over too early, but I don't think that's going to be the case for that one. I hope you'll agree I gave the car as long of a leash as I possibly could. So overall, it does seem like FSD has a general concept of snow driving and actually is vastly better than my last experience in the snow, but definitely still needs some improvement in some critical areas. I have a feeling the Tesla AI team is focused on getting unsupervised work in areas like Texas and California first, which probably means snow driving is taking a back seat for now. No pun intended. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do love making these videos and I'm so excited to see the direction FSD is headed lately. And remember, until we're sitting in the back seat, we still do need to supervise and to not get complacent, even when it really feels like it knows what it's doing. A big thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring shenanigans like these, and until next time, everybody.